Hello readers. I'm happy you're here. Today I'm going to share three stories that are very different. They have different characters, they take place in different settings, the characters are doing different things, and yet with all these differences they share something. They have something in common. And that's what we're going to investigate today. So see if you can notice what these three different stories have in common. I'm going to share these books by just sharing a few pages out of each book with you and then not sharing the end of the story because these are books that you may like to read for yourself. So book number one is called The Most Magnificent Thing by Ashley Spires. Here we go. This is a regular girl and her best friend in the whole wide world. They do all kinds of things together. They race, they eat, they explore, they relax. She makes things, he unmakes things. One day the girl has a wonderful idea. She's going to make the most magnificent thing. Ooh, that sounds interesting. So they get started. The girl tinkers and hammers and measures while her assistant pounces and growls and chews. And they finish a project. They're shocked to discover that the thing isn't magnificent or good. It isn't even kind of sort of okay. It is all wrong. The girl tosses it aside and gives it another go. Oh no, but I'm happy that she's gonna try again. And they try and try and try. They saw and glue and hammer and fasten and do all sorts of work. But they just can't make the most magnificent thing. And she gets mad. And then says, I'm no good at this. I quit. And her assistant suggests a walk. I'm going to end there. And I just will give you a small hint that when they come back from this walk, she sees all the work she's put in and she keeps going. And in the end, she's not disappointed. So if you want to find out what she makes, what this magnificent thing is, this is a wonderful, fun book to read. Okay, let's move on to book number two. It's called Abby and Vent's Unbreakable Crayons by Dr. Arlene Simon. Snap, Abby's crayon broke in two. One by one, all the other students' crayons broke too. Not again, she groaned. Miss Pilar, all the crayons broke again. Why do they always break? asked Abby. Maybe crayons are too soft or kids color too hard, said Miss Pilar. All crayons break, said Miss Pilar. Then Abby had a brilliant idea. I will make the first unbreakable crayons. Oh wow, that would be a great invention, wouldn't it? And so she headed to the library to research, read, and study all about how crayons are made. Next, Miss Pilar helped Abby carry out tests in the school's lab. Safety first, warned Miss Pilar. Wear a lab coat and safety glasses, please. On the first try, all the crayons broke. Abby tried again. Oh good, I'm glad. She added plenty of dye sometimes. She added a tiny drop of dye other times. She baked longer sometimes. She cooled faster other times. Still, the crayons kept breaking. Grrr, ah, yelled Abby. I give up. This is too hard. Oh boy. And so she took a pause, but she came back to get to testing and experimenting again. But I don't want to give the end away, of course, but I'll tell you this, at the end of this story, Abby says inventing is so much fun. So if you want to see how our invention ends up, give this book a read. 
All right, we're ready for book number three. And book number three is a little bit different because it's based on a real person's life. The other two had imaginary characters. And this one, which is called Snowflake Bentley, written by Jacqueline Briggs Martin, is based on the real life story of Wilson Bentley. So it contains some fact in it and some story. Here we go. Wilson Bentley was born February 9th, 1865, on a farm in Jericho, Vermont, in the heart of the snow belt, where the annual snowfall is about 120 inches. Lots of snow. Willie Bentley's happiest days were snowstorm days. He watched snowflakes fall on his mittens, on the dried grass of Vermont farm fields, on the dark metal handle of the barn door. He said snow was as beautiful as butterflies or apple blossoms. When his mother gave him an old microscope, he used it to look at flowers, raindrops, and blades of grass. Best of all, he used it to look at snow. While other children built forts and pelted snowballs at roosting crows, Willie was catching single snowflakes. Day after stormy day, he studied ice crystals. He had a real love for snowflakes. Their intricate patterns were even more beautiful than he had imagined. He expected to find whole flakes that were the same, that were copies of each other. But he never did. Willie decided he must find a way to save snowflakes so that others could see their wonderful designs. That's a wonderful idea. For three winters, he draw tried drawing snow crystals, but they always melted before he could finish. It says that he started drawing them at the age 15, but he could never draw them fast enough. They always melted first. But he kept on trying. He thought of a different way. He thought maybe he could take photographs of them with a camera. Even so, his first pictures were failures, no better than shadows. Yet he would not quit. Mistake by mistake, snowflake by snowflake, Willie worked through every storm. Winter ended, the snow melted, and he did not have any good pictures. He waited for another season of snow. Okay, I'm going to stop right there, but I will give you the hint that Willie Bentley made many first discoveries about snowflakes. And I want to share this super cool picture with you in the back of the book. Here it is. Nice up close, there he is with his camera, his real photo. And those are some real photographs of actual snowflakes. So cool. Snowflake Bentley. Okay, that's all three of the books that I took off my shelf to share with you today. Some of my favorites, and I'm wondering if you figured out what three, the three characters have in common, what they share. They're doing different things, but they all share something. If you're not quite sure, I'm going to share this with you, and it might give you a hint about what they share. So if we think of the first book, The Most Magnificent Thing, she thinks of something that she wants to build and she begins to hammer and saw and create. And then she gets stuck because it's not what she thought it was going to be, but she keeps going. She comes back and goes on and she glues and she fastens and she makes changes. And in the end, she ends up with something that she's proud of. Okay, we don't know what that is because you have to read the book yourself. Now, Abby invents unbreakable crayons. She thinks of something to invent. So she starts to study and learn and read about how the crayons are made. And then she makes some mistakes, but she keeps going. And she experiments and tests and adjusts as she goes. And she ends up thinking that inventing is fun. Okay? Snowflake Bentley, 
he has a passion for snowflakes and he also studies and learns and observes all sorts of things about them but they melt so fast he has a hard time studying them but he keeps going and he takes photographs of them and he draws them and he changes and adjusts until things work and he makes a lot of discoveries and this little wheel with yarn on it reminds me how we have to keep going to make progress. So all three characters share a process of becoming better at whatever it is they're working on. They use courage, persistence, determination to keep going, to come back and do more. And the good news is they persevered Persevere means to keep going when things are hard, and we can do that too. You can persevere, I can persevere. We just need to use our courage and keep going and try again. Mistakes are okay, failure's okay. Be like these characters and keep going. And if you would like to make one of these as a reminder to yourself to keep going, that you can do it, I have directions right at the end of this video. And sometimes if I'm feeling stuck, I'll come and wrap this around and make a new design, and it'll remind me that I can keep going. Thanks for watching. Bye.